you are watching Excess LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the February 28th, 2024 meeting of the Michigan City Common Council Workshop. You can find more information for this workshop by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Alright, here we go. So I'll call this uh, the workshop to order here. I'm going to discuss two ordinances regarding the Thomas Scholarship. The first one read amending various sections in Chapter 38 of the Michigan City Municipal Code to change the Promise Scholarship Exceptions Committee to a Promise Scholarship Review Committee and redefine the duties and responsibilities of the director and uh, said committee. And the second uh, ordinance we're going to discuss is amending ordinance number 4707, commonly known as the 2024 Salary Ordinance to amend the position of Promise Scholarship Director uh, to Educate and Workforce Development Director. So I don't know, if Angie, if you want to start? Yep. To go in? Yeah, so um, so what, what has been discussed and I, I've been talking about probably for the last year is um, how to expand workforce and development and education. So um, Ms. Keela Ward is now the Director of Workforce, Education and Workforce. And uh, what we've had before is the Promise Scholarship Director who was only solely responsible for the Promise Scholarship. And that was it. And the Exceptions Committee basically um, just if there was an appeal or if we denied someone, the Exceptions Committee would come in and make a ruling on the scholarship person application. So um, what I'm asking is for a review committee, very similar to what um, the Human Rights Commission does for their scholarships. Um, their committee, they review the scholarship applications, they review um, the essay, they make a determination amongst that group. Here it's a little different because it's really a checklist. Check, check, check. They've submitted everything. We've confirmed that they're, you know, residents. Um, it's not really um, um, one of those things that they have to, you know, make a determination based on how they feel about the essay, all of that. It's truly a checklist and actually um, a double check. Um, I think the the director will still go back and confirm everything that the committee's done, but it's another set of eyes for that. Now, on the second part of that with the director, um, let me tell you some of the things um, she is doing already that I've asked her to do and why um, the salary increase. Um, number one, she's leading an effort for a opportunity hub, which is comprised of um, several organizations, including the Center for Workforce Innovation. Um, we're applying um, for ready dollars. Um, she's meeting with the local manufacturers. Uh, she's responsible for the internship um, program and making sure um, she manages that program, manages those um, students that are a part of the program, but um, even a bigger picture, um, she's that contact for the community and working with the chamber, um, the EDC. I have her going to all of those meetings now, um, not just the Promise Scholarship. So um, thus the increase in pay, which I'm not asking for a, um, what is it called? I'm not asking for retroactive nothing I'm, I want an effective April 1st because um, we do have budget constraints and um, I just want to make sure I'm mindful of that but this has become um, a more exhaust, uh, exhaustive um, position um, than what it has been thus it needs to increase so um, I'm open for any questions but I will say that uh, it's been helpful for me already with her um, working with the Center for Workforce Innovation, Unity Foundation. Um, she's working with Andy Metanic on how to um, make this um, a little bit more uh, technology friendly. Um, so I'm, I have her working um, a lot, quite a bit, um, on several different initiatives that I'm interested in. So I'm open for any questions or anything. Yes. I want to ask you, because this is significant amount of work, but before the, the, this uh, change 
all she was doing was a uh, promise scholarship? Yes. The, the There's pro nothing much there. Well, I, don't get me to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. I, that's always been my concern. Okay. okay. Um, she, um, like Friday, she was at the high school Friday night. She did a wonderful presentation. But again, um, this is a marketing tool to have an education and workforce director because now she can be at the table when I can't be there. Right. You know, um, no, but this, yes. This is a good move. I, oh, yes, this yes, is a good but move. I'm prior not, to... Um, I'm just saying, only 20 scholarships were awarded last year. I, mean, I, don't, I, said 20, I think it was 20-something. I don't know the exact... Right, but yes, the, the sole responsibility for that position was the Promise Scholarship. And going to the high school, sitting at a, t you know, doing that kind of thing. So I think this is um, a better use of funds versus just very isolated. Right. The second question I had was, uh, the her pay does it come from the bucket of Promise Scholarship, or is does it come from a different bucket? It comes from Promise Scholarship. It comes from Promise Scholarship. Yeah. And we've done that. Um, um, one of the things that I know uh, Councilman Pribilinski asked for, we we have not. Um, We've underutilized that um, money as far as getting it out. Council Privilinski, myself, um, you know, we made some changes where we added renters um, to the Promise Scholarship and Marquette. Um, if if they're a resident, you know, and they attend Marquette, that they're even eligible for it. So I think um, we have to make it uh, technology driven, um, and then look for ways to uh, supplement, but. At this time, we it's been underutilized for the last seven years that we've had it. Um, is there an income requirement? Anybody can, uh, uh, if they live in Michigan City, they can apply for this? Yeah, it's not income driven. Um, I will say though, you one have to own property. Well, you don't even have to own property anymore. It's we got the renters. Renters. We renters. 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 So you have to be a resident. Yes, resident. you have to be a resident. Okay. But one of the things that um, I found, um, and and I'm going to continue to advocate for, uh, is that we have some type of minimum amount, though. Let, let's say, for instance, um, you know, we have people who are 21st century scholars who are receive a Pell Grant, for instance. And um, when I think of 21st century scholars or a Pell Grant, it's, that's income driven. Typically, uh, people who get that full award, mm -hmm. they get they their family. When you do your FAFSA, yeah. um, the the um, household um, recommended contribution is zero. So that means they have no money to give to the student. So um, that was one of the reasons too that I thought um, keeping the minimum of five hundred dollars. We're not going to exhaust this money, and hopefully, um, three years from now, um, we're putting money into it. Right now, we're just moseying along, and we're we're making money. We do have money in uh, a tr like a more of a um, what kind of account is that? Uh, where it draws interest. Uh, yeah, a trust. A trust. It's, in yes. a trust. it's in a trust. So part of the money is in a trust. It's generating, it's income. generating income each year. So Wait. we're doing that. Um, in my experience, um, I think there's some confusion between the 21st Century Scholarship and the Promise Scholarship. Um, I've asked some former students if they're getting the Promise Scholarship, and they say, no, I don't qualify. So there's, I think there's some confusion in there. So this position will help hopefully break that confusion. And I, I think all students, just because they're told, every student should apply. I, even if they're a 21st century scholar, I think they should apply because you, you apply for your 21st century scholarship in junior high school. Things change for you over time. Your family's income can change, the circumstance can change, so they still should apply for it because they may not get the full 21st century scholarship. They may only get a partial amount because of the change in their family's income. And I don't think people understand that. Any scholarship is worth applying for. I mean, the hours that are required for the, the 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 community service and all that will help in all their scholarships. So you know, I don't see you know I'm I'm going to push on the 
side of caution that hey you applying for for everything and this is one that's it's simple you don't even have to, do they write an essay no they don't even write an essay that's where most of the students they they really start getting all antsy about not filling out the application i gotta write this you know you just gotta fill it out and i think we just encourage them to do that real quick mm -hmm. um with the 21st century scholars now they just changed that that the original qualification still happens seventh and eighth grade but as you come to your your senior year and you apply with the fafsa you could still be eligible now for 21st century oh that's good it could, yeah because there could be changes in your your status. Someone could go through a divorce and now the income is not as high and everything like that. That's been a big complaint in, uh, complaint in the state of Indiana for a long time and they're changing that. So, That's good. Um, you know, seniors that didn't qualify back at early seventh and eighth grade now, they could still qualify. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. The question if somebody gets 21st century scholarship, can they still be eligible for promise scholarship? Possibly. That's why I said, why not? Okay. You know, I think it's there's a, 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 a some misinformation that they're automatically not eligible when that's really not true. Does the 21st cover books and housing? No. No, no, a lot of them don't. 21st co covers tuition and fees. And then it's not all fees. There's some fees that they pull out of it. Yeah. In-state only. Hmm? In-state only. For what? 21st. 21st. I don't know. I, I yeah, don't know. I go to the in-state college. You get 21st century. And you said something earlier that I didn't see in here. And, um, what was it? Oh, April 1. You said this doesn't take the salary. Oh, the salary. It won't be retroactive. It'll be, it's actually um, after it's passed. Yeah. It's after okay. it's passed. Okay. Yeah, that's what it says. After it's passed. So it'll be passed before April 1st. Yeah. Well, yeah, whenever you pass it. Okay. And just a, a quick background how, how she came with that salary. Um, she gave them and made them kind of equal to some of the other department heads who have supervision right. that supervise large groups of people. So it's kind of an equivalent to that. So she did not just pull that out of the, out of the sky. Um, that's how she came to, to get that salary. That is uh, but the compared to what she was doing before, this is a lot more. I mean, oh, you're it's talking double. about interns, you're talking about mm -hmm. workforce training and then coordinating with other workforce development activities. A lot more. A lot more. It's a lot more. Actually, yes. So. On well, that intern, uh, I know we're looking at college interns for the summer programs. What, are we looking at high school interns? That's another conversation, but I am. So one of the things that um, we're in conversation with is uh, these graduates of A.K. Smith and some of the other programs, and what could we use them for um, as far as internships. I, I did meet with um, our largest employers this morning. Um, we had um, a meeting this morning. I did a presentation to them. And uh, we talked about internships and opportunities for high school students and what that looks like. So um, still working through those. Um, I think we got to start with this first because we got some some areas and some projects that we know we want to get done. Um, so I think start with the college students first. But I did share with uh, large employers that, and Dr. Barbara Easton Watkins was here this morning and shared that. It's great that um, you need workforce, but we got high school students in these programs that need access and need um, to be exposed. And if there were opportunities for them, um, so uh, we have our own little distribution list now um, so that we can figure out how we're gonna move forward with that. And and we here, here you wanna look at those pathways, kids, because yep. they all have a half a day. And we just uh, did the, uh, they just announced the smart manufacturing. Um, through the school system. So um, this morning we had um, KTR, we had Solaire, Fiberbond, the school system, Blue Chip, um, I think HealthLink. You know, everybody has openings and um, Kila was here. Um, so we just wanted to make sure we had, we have some type of regular cadence to talk through how do we fill those positions and then talk about how do we use transportation with the city to, to support that. And <clears throat> I keep calling you Angie, Mayor. <laughs> they call you Angie what, for 40 years. Yes. Uh, Mayor, here's something, I'm not going to bring this up now, but here's something to tuck away. 
uh, we talked about those high school kids doing internships, maybe down the line, we can put them, use that as their volunteer hours toward the Promise Scholarship. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think it has been done that way. Before. Yeah, we've done some of it. Uh -huh. Okay, so now with all the interns that we're talking about with this stuff could be used to... Yeah, I think that was done before. I think Nancy Smith did that. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. She did, because, yes, my kid, definitely. Well, with the internship, okay, they're getting paid. Are they going to be paid? These are they're paid. The college students are paid interns, yes. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, to me, the volunteer hours for that's the separate yeah right but I think Brian were you alluding to the internship whatever hours they'd be working that that would go towards their volunteer hours no is that what you were saying that's what not if they're paid and so the way that would work and like, this is just yeah, you yeah. Can't do that. yeah yeah so like for instance we'll have all these interns here and we have like the boat race and different things and parades and we say hey if you're a promise scholarship if you would like to on your off time, outside of the work, because mm -hmm. the project they're working on is the project they're working on. But if they want to assist us with all our events and things, they would get hours. That's how my daughter Sydney got hours, because she would work the parade and, and different things. Mm -hmm. And that's how she got her hours. So I think it's an opportunity, not the paid time, but the off time. Two different things, yes. Cool. But for the high school students, that might be a good idea for those seniors graduating that's trying to get the rest of their hours to offer them some type of project, you know, that they can use as a senior project or something to, even before graduation, to get some hours. That, you know, they're, these students are capable of doing a whole lot of things. And I think if we put the opportunity in front of them, they'll, they'll take it. I mean, and it, it really doesn't bother me if they're in our internship program, <laughs> that if they're getting paid by, you know, that, that they'll still are working toward hours for a Promise Scholarship. I know that's a something we have to discuss later down the line, yeah. but in my mind, we have high school seniors and, and that that are involved in internships, they're getting paid for it. I, I still wouldn't mind that being counted as volunteer hours as well. I mean, that, that's a discussion down the line. Yeah, I, I think so. Typically, they're, you, you separate them. Mm -hmm. um, you separate them out. Um, some people get credit, you know, for, you know, through the university, and they can get paid. But when it comes to volunteerism, it's kind of separate. So I, I think I would be okay with that. Okay. So Mary Angie, another thing I wanted to ask you was the money that would be spent for work, for workers' training. Of course, uh, uh, she will be paid out of the scholarship um, pool of money. But other expenses, do you have other, like, a, a different uh, part of money for that, for training? So part of the, the change in the ordinance is calling it workforce and education now versus just Promise Scholarship. Isn't that part of the change in the ordinance? Yeah. So the ordinance used to just say Promise. We added a section that says <laughs> it added the additional stuff in there okay. so that we're covered. Okay. Um, so that way um, there's no conflict. So we had to so not only her salary, but if there are other expenses for workforce development, it'll come out of this money. Uh, well, that's not my intent. Okay. That's not my intent. Okay. So my no, that's not my my intent is the salary, but we will have to budget, and the council will have to approve any additional expenses that come out of there. I, I don't want this to be a free for all. Right. I want it to be that's very right. transparent. I want to make sure that. Uh, just if the only thing that comes out of is her salary, rest of it goes for scholarships. Yes. Well, here's what I was thinking right. when we had, just thinking back to the last person, Janet, but when Janet would make up advertising material and deliver it to the high school, who was paying for that? It was budgeted. You guys yeah. saw it. You budgeted all that. That's right. Why can't this stuff it, be it, it does. For it, well, it can be, but you will approve it. Gotcha. You will approve it. So other things can come out, but it has to go through the budget process and the council has to approve it. You know, it's not just, hey, we got this bucket of money and we can go spend it. It has to be a line item. Yeah, it's a line item. Yes. Budget. Yes. Just like it was before. Yeah. So, yeah. So it can be used, but it'll be budgeted and approved by you. Okay. Actually not. It'll have to come through your budget and then only thing we can do is cut because we can't add. 
Yeah, but, but, but you, you know, know what you I'm know saying. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. All right. So, Auntie, so I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. So, besides the scholarship program, so how much do you do you even envision an amount to use in this workforce development program? Uh, well, right <clears throat> now, half a million, a million. Because here's 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 my here's my here's my point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is so then we're, if, if we go ahead and say yeah we're, we're you know we're going to agree to all this mm -hmm. and then we open up that scholarship money okay and you come back and you say hey I want a I want a million dollars to do whatever I want to do I'm just using that for yeah. example I'm right. shaking your head but yeah I'm just using that for an example I want to make sure and I'm telling my other council members it's also because Mr. Let me see it. Let me see Beatry that. and I have been through this before. I think this Brian was on the budget committee. And we made sure that there was a there was a minimum balance left in that scholarship fund of like three million dollars, so that this fund never goes empty, in, you know, down the down the line. So what what I'm what I'm thinking of is that the council possibly now can set a minimum amount to say maybe two million and that there would be a million to work with that the mayor would have an idea okay well i got a million to work with but she still has to come to us to get approval a lot to take that money out of that account right angie That's yeah the way it's so let work. so let me let me read what i let me tell you what my intent is or because my intent is not to use it for workforce development programs but one of the things that i would like to see and we talk about scholarships so what this allowed us to do is just not only to have the promise scholarship but i may come back to you and say we're not using this money like we should or as fast as we should, but we have residents that need certifications in welding. Right. We might create a scholarship program for non-traditional students. Mm -hmm. Now we can come out of this money. Yeah. And so that's really my intent. As far as like building or creating something new with the city, not trying to do that. But I do want the opportunity to come back to you and say, now we have the Primus Scholarship but now I want the Life Gets Better scholarship for non-traditional students who want to go get a welding certificate or we identify a list of uh, air compressor certifications they could use and now we'll match Ivy Tech for them to get that certification. That's the best example. That's my intent um, in the future is to allow for high school students who may not go off to college mm -hmm. or skip a year, skip two years and say, well now I need a job, I need a certification. Well, now there'll be some type of scholarship that's available for them and uh, not just high school graduates. Everybody's not gonna go to college right out of school. And I think we, we have missed the boat with this money. And I, the employers are telling us that we don't have the skilled workers, but if the city can help get them skilled and get them there, I'm good with that. But. Um, I'm okay, whatever the council you know, my, is going to set yeah, something. My, my suggestion is I don't think they should use this money for uh, for uh, city employees. Uh, no, this training. this it, is not it, city it, employees. Yeah, no, yeah, this is this is for residents. Yeah, residents who like adult education who want to learn new skills for the newer jobs. That this are, is for uh, residents. residents. The money from ARPA. Right. That I that you already approved is for employees. That's that's a totally separate bucket. Okay. This is a, this is a resident driven. No, I think it's a great idea. Or not only just high school students, but also individuals who want to learn skills. Yes. Actually, everything that you just said. I put it in there. It's in the order. I know. <laughs> so, you read it carefully. I didn't. I didn't have bring my copy, but me and Amber, uh, Attorney LePage Starbrink, we had this discussion, and that example is the example that I shared. Yeah, that's right. In yeah. There, so 
Yeah. And it does say residence, so it's like a smelling point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to hit all the holes that I thought we might have. So. Frankly, that will do a lot of good to the student if we do that training or skills training. I'm not trying to throw everything at y'all at once. I'm trying to. I'm trying to pace myself. I has. I have. What's four more ordinances for her, but I, I backed off of it. <laughs> Trying to pace, pace myself. I want to do everything now, but I know I can't. So, um, but no, I think, I think it, it will allow us to help residents that want to be skilled up. Um, also, I just want to give you an update. I, I did meet with um, uh, the chancellor for Ivy Tech um, on Monday. Um, again, we're seeking a new building for Michigan City, a new campus for Michigan City. Um, one of the things that I shared with the manufacturers today is that I need their support. Uh, we were number two the last time and we didn't make, we didn't, so we didn't get it. Um, so I'm trying to push the support of um, the local companies here to support that building. HealthLink, uh, which will be opening um, in April. Um, they put their money where their mouth is. They they said what they were going to do, and uh, I think um, this is an opportunity for the air compressor companies and and all of the other advanced manufacturing companies to come to the table. So I'm asking them uh, to provide a letter of support or some type of commitment to uh, Ivy Tech. Um, so I'm working through that now because it's happening like in the next couple of weeks. A little short. Later. I'll get this one day. Real quick, you were when you were talking, you said we were number two. Yeah. Could you explain what that? I know what it means because I was right. Um, it's a it's a long it's a long process going through um, the state um, process with the board for Ivy Tech, the board of ed education actually, and all of the legislators and all of our legislators in the region um, spoke at a hearing in support of a new Michigan City campus. Um, everybody is on board and quite frankly we just we didn't get to the finish line but um, there's still an opportunity and I think by having these changes and these programs that we're showing that Michigan City administration, the City Council, we're all supportive of making sure residents are skilled up to get them to Ivy Tech. Because uh, what I want them to know is look we're trying to create a pipeline along with the school system to get people in seats at Ivy Tech, but we need to make sure the programs that are available are beneficial to the local employers. So um, I think this is the step, in, the first step in the right direction. Yes. Yeah, Mayor. So where would the other Ivy Tech campus be? Well, actually, the, they almost got their new one going. Where's, where's the new one going? What? The Ivy Tech campus oh if they get one here yeah well yeah they're building a new building that's health link that's health link oh i'm sorry okay <laughs> that's health link so what what they're looking to do is so if you look at the way it's set up i'm sorry to get off track but ivy tech is pushed back versus um and the parking is in front mm -hmm. um what the the draw what i saw previously is the new building will be in front the front is the front of the building and parking will be the entry will be in the back between so HealthLink and Ivy Tech will face one another and so um, they could leave the old building open while they're building the new one you know kind of that kind of thing so right. yeah so if y'all want to provide a resolution supporting it I didn't think about that um, a resolution supporting, um, you know, creating a, a new Ivy Tech. That would be great. Yeah, I think that would be great. Should I sponsor that? Yeah. I'm sure everybody would sponsor that. Yeah, yeah, we'll all sponsor that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't think about that. That's a great idea. Um, but that's that's the gist of, you know, the, the new position, the change. I will go back to all the Promise Scholarship Committee, ask if they would like to stay on. Um, you know, and um, just move forward in that capacity. But I think um, she's, she's, Ms. Ward is busy. Um, she's working through a lot of different things. I have her going to quite a few meetings. And, uh, but I think it's a, it's a good use of time for us 
with uh, the city growing and, and everything that's happening. So, any other questions? Yeah, you know what? And I had it underlined here, mm -hmm. I, I, either in the resolution or in the uh, ordinance, it says that the uh, scholarship director will give a report to the mayor on an annual basis, but it doesn't have the city council. And I'd like we to just took that, that same language from before. I don't think we made that change. I think that was just in there. Oh, yeah. here, here it is. Here it is. Under duties. Mm hmm. Yeah, it says uh, including an annual report to the mayor, and that's it. But I remember she used to come. She they still will. Used to come to us. Yes. Yeah. I think that's how it just it that. read that. To the job description. Yeah. Mayor can order it. <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, yeah. 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 I just want to say I want to make sure it's yeah. included that they come yeah. to talk to us. That's yeah. Right. And she'll be before you probably more. <laughs> more than um, not, even around other initiatives. So, even Promise and whatever else we got going on. Yeah. yeah. All right, any other questions, concerns regarding the ordinances? If not, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting, unless the mayor has more to talk about. No. Nope. I don't have any questions. I just think it's a great thing that not only we have a mayor who went through Michigan City schools, but the ward was our graduate from Michigan City Area schools, and now she's back in the community and she's got an important position promoting the city. So I, I, it's, it's nice for me as a former principal to be able to look at these people. I look at you too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I happen to come out of there. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, um, I, I I think that um, we'll see some benefits out of this and cost savings. This is people don't understand the cost savings that we're going to receive out of the internship program. Um, some of the projects that the engineer has already shared with me is going to save us Great. tons of money. Great. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Nothing else. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you.